Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Silent Crafts, and welcome to my studio. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I'm going to show you the crafty goodness that I've been working on this week. It has been another slow week in a craft room, but I did get a few things done. I have been working on my scarecrow cross stitch in the evening, a little bit here and there. This looks a little different than the rest because I've only done the cross in one direction. I have to go back and do the other. When I go back to do the other, it's going to be really relaxing and I can just do it without even thinking. So this is this section right here. It always looks like uh, the fabric is not big enough. Hopefully it is. If it's not, this is for me. I'll totally cheat and I'll go and pick up another one of these from Michael's and I'll splice a little onto each side and it'll work out fine. It's all folded up like this because I've been working on it in hand, meaning no hoop. So I go ahead and I fold this up like this. And when I work on it, I work on it like this. I put a couple clips in each for the corners, and then I can just work on it like this, sitting in my chair watching TV at night. I've been looking for my Q-snaps. Q-snaps make it a lot easier to put it in my little stand that I have so I can set the stand on the table and I can just work two-handed on it. But I have not come across the Q-snaps in any of my unpacking yet. Not that it's not here. I just haven't seen them for a second time. I've seen everything pretty much for a first time. I need to go back through and figure out where I saw it and what box it's in. That's part of my plan coming up this summer. I need to pick up some more of the black storage bins with the yellow lids because things that I don't use regularly, I want to go ahead and just pack it in that, put a good label on it, and that's it. It's just going to get left in the garage and I'm not going to worry about it. Things like kitchen items, the kids' things from when they were little, and things that were robs and just things that you keep but you don't need to have out in the open every day. I think I'll pick up a few more of the big clear Rubbermaid type, the Sterilite type oh, storage bins, and I will put the crafting things in that because that'll be easier to see. Then I'll use one of you guys' tips from when I moved to take a little spiral notebook or something, label all of the black bins, one, two, three, four, five, and then make an actual itiner itinerary note, and then make an actual inventory of everything that's in that box so I know when I need to find the Q-snaps that it's in box four. Once everything stays in a box, then it's a good idea to have it labeled. Before, I just did my inventory down the side of the box, and everything was right there, so it was fine. I did finally get to work on my little houses this weekend. These are the original four that I made, just to give you an idea. So that's my starter set, and then I went and made 19 more this weekend. I ended up spending Saturday doing things like deep cleaning the bedroom and the bathroom and taking care of things like that, sweeping and mopping the house and just a variety of things. And the rest of the day I spent working on this project, cutting all the fabrics. Most of them came from my scraps. Some of them were pulled off of the shelf if they were a favorite uh, fabric. I did want to put Christmas and fall and Halloween. This quilt is going to be for me, so it has a mixture of everything in it, even a little bit of sparkly fabric, some fabrics that I just purchased last year, and some fabrics from you guys, and other fabrics that I've had in my little rainbow bin of scrappiness for uh, several years now. Based on my calculations, I'm going to need 81 blocks. And then I'll probably need to put a border on it. So I have a lot more houses to work on. It's going to be a little bit different because the houses are rectangular and they're not square. So I might have just a weird number of them. And the across is usually narrower on a lap quilt and it's usually longer anyways. So it'll all balance out. I am going for all blue skies, if you might have figured that out and noticed it. Sometimes I've paid enough attention to match doors with houses and roofs with houses and stuff like that. And otherwise, it was just fun to sew. 
I do love this sloth fabric that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I don't have much left, but I wanted to make sure I had at least one house for my little house quilt here. Since it's a quilt for me, I'm just making sure that whatever fabrics I choose for the house itself are fabrics that I love, and it's not just a, I need to use up the scraps, so this is what I'm going to put into my quilt. Last week I got myself all set up to work on the quilting for my scrappy bins for the rainbow wall on the black bookcase behind me. And I finished up the quilting on a couple of these and I went ahead and got some quilting done. This is a good project to work on at night so I can just spend a little no brain sewing half hour, an hour. I keep it set up for my little brother's sewing machine. So this one here is my Juki and this my main sewing and that back there is my little brother's sewing machine and I just keep that set up to work on these so I don't have to worry about changing anything and it just works out great that way. Plus, this is probably going to wear out a needle at some point because sewing through all the different layers of the scraps. But it's okay. It'll all work out in the end, and if the needle gets dull, I'll just go ahead and change it. I did notice that there is a lot of, know if, there you go, you probably see it there, a lot of bearding from the batting. But since this is a faux backing and there will be a lining to the basket, you won't see that, so it won't matter. Plus, once you put the scraps in it, you're not going to see anything. But it's really interesting to see how that does affect it. Now, I don't have any in the front, so that means I must have laid my batting down properly and put the wrong side on the back. So that just gives you an idea. When people talk about putting their batting down the right way, right sides up, facing their quilt top, it's because you can get some pulling of the bearding through, and the bearding is just all of this little white bits. Like when a gentleman doesn't shave and they get a little stubble, that's what you end up getting here. And you really don't want to see that coming through on the front of your quilt. So there's the pink one. These are all trimmed up and ready to go. Here is the browns, creams, and tans. Now I do have a lot of strings and stuff on here and I will clip those off later on and then make sure that everyone is sewn down. Sometimes there will be little bits that aren't really sewn down completely here. I just pull them back and make sure if I could see the batting underneath there. Now I can see right along the edge of this bit. Now overall for this project, it's not that big of a deal. If something comes a little pop through, if it frays a little, I have the front, I have the batting, and I have the faux backing and then the lining. But I will go ahead and just pop a pin in here. So when I go back to turn this into the little fabric basket bin thing, I'll go ahead and I'll know that I need to stitch down that a little bit. I had a similar problem here on the orange one. And on this one, I actually just glued a piece of fabric right on top because I could see the batting, probably a 16th of an inch, but I could see it. Again, it's not that big of a deal. I tried to catch all of them, but with this amount of small scraps everywhere, it can be difficult to catch every single little edge. It's my basket, my scrap bin. I can always take it off the shelf, even with the lining in it. I could take it off the shelf, put it back underneath my sewing machine, or I can hand stitch something down, applique a piece down, if something needs to be adjusted like that. So it's not that big of a deal. We're not talking a fancy project here. If this was an actual sewn patchwork project, then I'd be a little bit more concerned. Thank you to everyone who entered the 50,000 subscribers giveaway. And thank you to everyone for subscribing to the channel, watching the videos, leaving a comment, and sharing the videos. I have drawn the winner's names. If you want to double check to make sure I said your name, go down to the description box and I will list who won what and I'll put the names next to it. Like I'll put Flamingo Quilt and I'll put the winner's name. So if you're chosen as one of the winners and your name is listed down below in the description box, what I'll need from you is to send me your full name and mailing address. I'll put my email right there so you guys don't have to look for it. If I don't receive an email from anyone within a week, 
meaning when I wake up on July 8th, if I haven't received an email from you, I will draw another winner for the flamingo and the red spool. If I don't hear anything from the people that have been chosen for the fabric postcards or the rainbow cards, they'll just go back into my supply and I'll give them away some other time. The winner for the flamingo quilt is Janice Cahill. Congratulations, Janice. Thank you so much for following me. I recognize your name and I know you've been following for a while. You and I will eventually have matching flamingo wall hangings because I will be making one of these for myself also. Now I can only go by the name that you guys have for your comments when you leave a comment below my video. So that's why I'm gonna put everything down below just to make sure there's no mistaken on who's who. If you aren't sure, go ahead and leave a comment or email me and I will double check your comment against the comment that wins, but I think we're gonna be pretty well fine. The winner of the red spool is Jay Murphy. Congratulations, Jay Murphy. I know you've been following for a while also. Now I pulled three names for the fabric postcards. I'm not gonna show you which postcards you won. I just brought out my little stash of postcards to show you my collection here. These are the ones that are either in the shop or that I've made in preparation to go in the shop. I have them as shop. Here's the rainbow ones when I do the rainbow club. Then I have this selection of summertime and whenever. And then I have my batiks. And then we go into the Christmas ones. So I'll send you something from the summertime collection. Now the three names that I chose if you left the word comment in your comment is Jody Roundtree. Congratulations, Jody. I'm so glad your name was drawn. Tammy Schneers, S-C-H-N-I-E-R-S. -E I'm sure your name has been mispronounced, so you probably know who you are. Again, check down below in the description box. And Juanita Garza. Congratulations, everyone. I'll just randomly send you one of the fabric postcards from one of these sections. I do enjoy making fabric postcards just a smidge. Now the scrappy rainbow cards is going for the lurkers. Now those don't take as much room. I have plenty of space in here for those. If you remember from that live stream, you could see the little picture on the thumbnail where it was a rainbow of colors and then I just cut it into cards. I will go into this collection and just pull out a random one for you guys. And this time I chose four winners. I think I picked everyone that was a lurker. Donna Lewis. Congratulations, Carrie Amerafina. Hopefully I got that correct. Ms. Didia, Didia, and Patricia Hartman. All your names are gonna be down below listed in the description box. I'll put it right up at the top so it's easy to find. Please send me your mailing address by midnight July 7th. When I get up here Arizona time at about 6 a.m. on the 8th, I'm gonna go ahead and just close everything out. And if a name hasn't been emailed to me with a mailing address, then I'm just gonna go ahead and either pick another winner for the spools or the flamingo, or if you were going to get a postcard or a card, as I said, I'll just put that back into the stash. So thank you guys so much for your support over the years. And I hope you guys hang out with me some more and see what else we're gonna be working on. So that's what I worked on this week. I worked on the overalls for my scarecrow. I made a bunch of houses and I went ahead and I quilted up some scrap baskets. I've been thinking about the bookcase a lot and the different things that I want to change up. Once I have all the baskets made, I will be able to fit more on the shelf. Right now I can only put three Dollar Tree bins, but I'll be able to put four of these. So that will free up a couple shelves. And I think I want to bring some fabric out of the closet and put it on the shelf. So I have it right behind me, easy to grab, put back and not have to constantly go into the closet and try to find something that I need because that closet still needs to be cleaned. So your scrappy word for today is cross stitch. Are you guys working on any cross stitch projects this summer? I know several of you do cross stitch and you do knitting and crochet or embroidery along with the different types of quilting you do. Cross stitch is a great slow stitching type of a project to work on to help you calm down, slow down and relax. At least that's what it does for me. 
But yes, some cross-stitch projects can also be very frustrating. But that's no different th than quilting projects. I do enjoy cross-stitch. I don't do it very often. I prefer just a quick little, maybe an ornament or something like that. Something small that I can work on a little bit and get it done and then set it aside and move on to some other projects. So I hope you guys are having a great summer. Don't forget we have the live stream this weekend, Saturday at 11 a.m. Arizona time. I think this weekend I'm going to work on my string project, my jelly roll string project, because I have to pick my daughter up from the airport after the live stream, and I really don't want to get into anything too in-depth right now. Plus, I'm trying to finish projects and not start new ones. Although I do have a couple new ones that we're going to be starting up this month. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!